Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode number 278. I'm your host Ron Land aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Christian Russell. Hello. And Rick Alvarez. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find me, then maybe you too can hire Rick Alvarez. Yes, and you're off screen, so <laughs> all we're saying is your shoulder while we're talking. I see myself on screen. Yes, but on the Skype window, that's all we're saying, we were saying was just the side of your ear. And, yeah, right there. That's right. If you can find me, if you can <laughs> find me, then you can hire me. If you or anyone else you know has any information leading to the whereabouts of Rick Alvarez. <laughs> and, sound like you can, and if you commercials. can deal with this now. <laughs> mesothelioma commercials. <laughs> you, you are a loved one. You yeah. may be entitled to financial compensation. <laughs> it's like uh, those uh, those drug commercials and everything. I, I don't know what I don't care what drug that there is. It's uh, the side effects always sound way worse than what you could possibly have that we, you would be taking the drug for. It's like mm. you know may cause uh, uh, internal Dysentery. bleeding. Yeah, may ca cause yeah. internal bleeding or even death. May You're, cause death. Your testicles may fall off. <laughs> that, that's not how medicine's supposed to work. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think that's how medicine is supposed to work. No. I, well, I'm on a new medication myself uh, for my diabetes, and it's uh, something called Ozempica. Uh, it's a little once-weekly shot that I inject into my, into my tummy. and uh, For a second there, I thought you were going to say it to something, <laughs> something else. Into my, uh huh, yeah, into that, yeah. I, uh, I, I'm dude, getting I used tested. to sell drugs that did that. It was horrible. I'm, I'm getting tested, Duran. I, I might have the sugars too. Oh, yeah. It's not fun. Not fun. Yeah. You're getting you, old. You want to eat all the old. things and you cannot. I want to put all the things in my mouth and I can't. Yes. I want, I want to stick you, everything in my face hole. You, you love to have and, everything. And the in doctor your mouth. says I can't do that no more. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> this Christian, is, uh, well, Christian's see, over here feeling un uncomfortable. He's he's over here, you know. Oh, cheaters! Uh, oh, Twinkies! Uh, oh, no, not chili! That bad. Uh, I need to put chili on a pizza with some hot dogs. Uh, uh. Hey, that actually We're sounds good. Why has that not happened? Chili on a pizza. We're we're over here. Like, is this gluten free? Is there sugar in this? <laughs> is this diet? Is this diet? No, it's not. Diet. Old old man problems, and I'm only 38. <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple more years to go before I have to I, deal with all of that. I it's know starting, like, but like I'm 58. I, I was 23 I'm whenever I was diagnosed with diabetes. So, man, I am older than that was child. And then Orson, I believe he said was. I think Orson said he was like eight. I uh, think he's got type one though. Yeah, yeah, he's had it bad since he was like really, really young. So if you're ever at a convention and you see him sitting there shooting up, it's not heroin. Yeah. It looks cool though. Yeah, actually, it looks really scary. The first time, first several times I saw it, I was really afraid. Yeah, it freaked me I out. Like, what one is time. We, we were eating at a restaurant. Uh, believe me. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. in public. Yeah, we were eating at a restaurant like that, and he just whips out this needle like that and pulls right. up his shirt. And just, and I'm just, like, what the hell? It'd be a lot cooler exactly if he just whips out the needle and he just goes <laughs> right into his neck. Improper. Now, that'll, that'll freak somebody neck. out. Thank goodness. Right good. into his neck. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? And then I had to remember that, oh, right, people do that. That's the thing. Yes. But anyway, uh, this is a show about Transformers, and we are uh, going Not to talk to you about Transformer-type stuff. Um, Headmaster Don brought up a topic a couple weeks ago, um, and unfortunately he couldn't be with us today because we're actually recording a day early uh, because I have some plans tomorrow night uh, with, with the girly friend and... Would not be a, ooh, yes. Good old lefty. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, so I was not going to be able to actually uh, do any recording tomorrow night. Um, still working on getting the new machine. Um, you know, I got my tax money in, so hopefully that will happen soon. Knock on wood. Uh, and uh, uh, we... Uh, we came up, uh, Headmaster Don came up with this topic. And so if it sucks, then you can blame Headmaster Don. Uh, and 
I believe his Twitter handle is at HMRC for EVR on Twitter. You can send him a message and tell him that Supreme Class Cheetor is the greatest toy that was ever made. It is. Yes. And that you love RC mouse pads that are raised and bumpy. So does he. Yes. Why do things like that exist? <laughs> These people are weird. Why? I don't know. I'm just like... Someone shared... You know, I, I see some of this sexy TF art out there. I'm like, what? What, what is the appeal Rick's, to this? Rick, someone shared a picture the other day. It was a hand-drawn picture. It was actually, oh, the no. artwork was quite good, but it was Megatron uh, on one side of the wall with a hole and Shockwave oh, sticking his gun barrel. Yeah. Uh, that's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why, why Sergio do and I weird? talked about that recently. Why, it's it's why just weird. Exist? Because there's weirdos Please. out there. And, the, and some weirdos are Transformer fans. Probably, and probably if those ones are listening, listening to us, we to still this, like you. Like, just yes. you're weird. Yes, but we like probably you, but you're someone weird. that's listening or watching this show right now uh, is really into that stuff. So we really can't judge. I mean, we we have to take all the kinds here. I mean, we 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 are grown lots man of money for plastic toys. crack. Yes. So yep. I guess so. you know. Uh, well, everyone I mean, has their own addiction. It's like I was I was sitting here before we went on air, and uh, I was looking at my fans' toys. Uh, Terminus Giganticus, and I'm like, I paid almost three hundred dollars for that thing, and it sits there. <laughs> it just sits there, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you but know, I, I paid. Uh, I love it. I have the same problem. I paid ten thousand dollars for my driveway, and it just it just lays there. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it just sits there all day and night. Just could have got some gravel, man, or a wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey, I, pay, I paid good money for my wife. Oh. I paid good money for my wife. All right, John, we still haven't got to the topic. What's the topic? Yes. Well, I'm just trying to be entertaining. Hopefully, you're we being... keep, we Are keep you not entertained? <laughs> I'm playing the shameless role today. Um, but anyway, Headmaster Don, you can blame him for this topic. Uh, it is uh, kind of a marketing topic, but we're gonna. I want to go into a little bit more uh, than just the marketing end of it. Um, we all love the toys that are inside the box, uh, but there are a lot of things that come with the toy uh, that uh, help add to the experience. Yes, Rick is holding up a, what is it, a Raiden? This is a Raiden Jr. gift set, sealed. Oh, wow. Minty box, too. Um, Minty box, so the packaging is a part of it, but there's a lot of other things that are involved. You know, artwork, uh, accessories, uh, things that are related to the toy that you can uh, that you can pick up. A lot of things that are that add to the value of the toy or the importance of the toy in your mind uh, and in the uh, the overall enjoyment. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And um, I also want to talk, uh, go into the uh, the accessories end of it. Um, you know, are, are accessories kind of necessary or are they kind of uh, not necessary? Uh, of note, lately, with the Power of the Primes toys, a lot of them are coming without weapons. And that's kind of a disappointment. You know, I mean, you, uh, I got my Voyager Power of the Prime, Primes Grimlock and he comes with the foot, pad, foot pads. For Volcanicus and no guns, uh, you know, no dual cannon, no no sword. Thank God for tra uh, for Shapeways and people that do great things that way. But I think they're kind of trying to push the uh, the fact that you can use a little ti uh, the I'm sorry the Prime Masters as weapons. Um, so that kind of. But it's not the same. Helps. I mean, it's, it's not, not the not same. A, no. It's not like it's a designated weapon that it's. Uh, Optimus has that iconic blaster. Yes. Grimlock, Dinobots, they have that iconic sword. Megatron, he's got an iconic sword. Shockwave has an iconic arm cannon, a barrel style that's it's significant to the IP of that character. So I think, you know, Combiner Wars, they're, they're fun toys. They're great toys for kids. They're, they're really good for adults, and as adults, we can supplement those toys with Shapeways 
and and third party uh, accessories. Um, but for the kids but that is, don't is have access lost? to that, yeah, I think there's something lost there. Uh, and with and uh, uh, let's go ahead and, and and tackle this this bear right now. Uh, you know, with the accessories part. Uh, you know the 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 accessories that come with a toy is something that a lot of people you don't really think about or even notice until they're not there, in my opinion. Um, you know, because a lot of the times, some of them you just set to the side, you rarely use, or you only use in one mode. Um, you know, like the foot pads. For, for me, some of them, uh, you know, like in Generation One, what do you do with the combiner bits when they're not in combined mode yeah um so you just set them off to the side uh you know i've got like a, a couple little little tackle boxes down here with some weapons in it you know just uh, you just kind of keep them sorted out that way but, but it was a different time then you know like you would when you would transform your seekers, well that's even modern though you, you'd take well okay let's let's start at the beginning then with uh starscream g1 starscream you take his arms off, you take his fist off, you take his wings off, uh, you take his uh, landing gear off, and you just put him to the side and hope you don't lose him in between the time that you're playing as Jet versus Robot. All right, And then as time has gone on, the design theory has been, we want a toy that is complete, so even if you lose a gun or a sword, you're still able to transform that figure into its full car mode or its full bird mode or chat, whatever it, it may be. Uh, now, that is true still of uh, the power of the Prime's toys. Um, but you have these awkward, very awkward pieces for Grimlock that just kind of stick to the sides of his arm. And they're, they're not really designed in a way that is... Um, symbolic uh, or representative enough of a weapon they're not his accessories they're his combined those accessories but he himself doesn't have any and they look right. and they also look gangly let's be honest they, they do look, look gangly uh, and it's it's not enough no is it is no. it enough well, uh, i am kind of taking a page from you know the the encouraged playbook i guess as it were uh, from hasbro and using a, a Prime Master as his weapon, I'm using, I think it's Landmine, uh, the uh, the one with the de double-barreled uh, uh, Gatling gun, I guess, that uh, he turns into the... the, the uh... What color? <laughs> I have to look at it. Is he yellow and it's Landmine? Uh, if it's red, it's Cloudburst. Cloudburst, yeah. The, re uh, the red and blue one. The, uh, f the wave one. The one that was yeah, not Robert. Skullgren, yes. Um, I'm using him as my uh, as my weapon for Grimlock because he's at least got the double barreled gun, but it's not True. it's not the gun that typically you would associate with Grimlock. Uh, you know, Grimlock, uh, all the Dinobots for that matter, have a very identifiable, iconic, uh, iconic and identifiable sword. If you are familiar with the Dino Box, you know whose sword goes with, with whom. You know, Grimlock has a straight-edged uh, uh, sword, um, almost a broadsword type, I guess. Uh, then you have uh, Slag, who's got the, uh, the the hilt that's got, like, the fancy the fancy curls on it, I guess. Uh, Sludge has got the, uh, 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 the, the little wire that connects the hilt to the to the i guess the beam and then uh, snarl's got the jagged uh blade and then swoop has got kind of a variation on yes on uh on on grimlocks you know, it's kind of squarish and everything so they uh, you know whose sword goes with who and yeah rick's holding up uh, uh is that he actually this, comes with that one, doesn't he? Or is yeah, that Swoop a, came yeah. with that, but so, he didn't so come Swoop, with his missile pods. No. Right, so Swoop doesn't come with his weapon. The Dinobots come with either the sword or, or a blaster, not with both. But, you know, he comes with this, you know, awkward-looking thing. And I don't know if, if it's supposed to represent a, a shield or a gauntlet or a blaster. 
and yeah, all right, it's it's got some playability with it where you know you can attach it to his hand or its arm. Uh, but it would just be so much nicer if he can just click it to the back and not look at it. Mm-hmm. Because for people like me, I just take this and I just it goes in a box. Set it aside. It just goes, yeah, it just That's goes in a box mind. because this is this is how the character should look. And you know, thanks to Shapeways and, and check out Trent Troop's uh, uh, Shapeway store. He does a lot of great weapons. Uh, I need to get that that signature weapon for for Swoop and all the Dinobots because it, it does feel like there is something missing here. Well, the uh, the double missile pods on the uh, 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 well, the the missile pods on his wings are also a, a hallmark of Swoop that are are really missing on that toy. Um, you know, and, and for that matter, it isn't just official toys that this is limited to. And one of my favorite third party toys, uh, is guilty of having a missing accessory that I would have expected. And that would be fans toy stomp, you know, keeping with the Dinobots theme fans toy stomp does not have sludge's rifle. He's got, it's got his, uh, his grenade pod launcher. It's got his sword, but it does not have a rifle, Sludge's rifle. And I thought that was a strange omission from such a uh, premium version of that character. Yeah, usually third parties are very much into making sure that they they hit all the uh, check boxes for homages when they do characters. When they do characters in that sense, where it, where it's a you know almost a direct uh, representation of how it looked in, in a certain uh, time period, when they do something else uh, that's that's like that Springer from um, what was that that first Triple Changer Springer, the deluxe one. Oh, the uh, that, uh, uh, Warbot Defender. Fans Project Warbot yes. Defender. Yes. So okay, so you give that one a pass because it's not. It's not a definitive reconstruction of how that character looked. It's a new interpretation of that character. All right, so you give that a pass. But when you, when you have something like a Fans Toys Dinobot, like some, something that's like a masterpiece, you really want it to have everything it's supposed to have. Everything that you remember made that character cool. It'd be like selling a Prime without a Matrix nowadays. If he comes with a matrix slot, but he doesn't have a matrix in it, it would be it would be a weird omission to create an Optimus with a matrix slot, but not have him come with a matrix. Mm-hmm. What I thought was a recent weird omission was a uh, masterpiece black convoy, and so to remedy that, I had to get this. You know, I'm I'm sitting here in my basement looking at my my toys, and it occurs to me. It's been a really, really long time since we've had a promotion like this in Transformers, where this is a uh, throttle bot, and it comes carded with a uh, little uh, decoy. Ah, uh, yes. That's another another thing that is come and gone, uh, that is not part of the toy itself, but it helps add to the enjoyment of it. Right. Um, so for the same price, back in the day, you'd be able to get a little decoy transformer, which came randomly packed. And on the G.I. Joe side, they had the little, uh, you know, PVC G.I. Joe figures. I don't think I've ever had anything like that. The closest I've got is Minicons during Armada. Yeah, uh, the Armada period, there, there were special gift packs where, for the same price, they'd, they'd take a, a Voyager or, a, you know, like a Mega figure and they say dick mini cons on top of it yeah they would kind of just tape a container of three mini cons on top of it and a lot of those times th- those ended up at like um black friday sales or like a yep. bj's costco sam's club type type of event. i don't know about your area but a lot of times in the stores that i would go to around here you could uh find those packaging and people had cut the mini cons uh off the top and just taken the mini cons yeah. That's a shame. I, I hate it when that. people do that. I hate it when people Saw buy a figure once. and then return a different figure in the box. Yes. 
annoying. But, That's another topic for another time. Uh, promotions, yeah, promotions was such a great, you know, whether it's a PVC figure or a reflective patch or a sticker, it was just, as a kid, I remember just it being such a big deal for me, opening that thing up and, and t- like, I got this little decoy now. I got this little, like, I think I had them all style. as a kid. I'm still trying to finish off my uh, red Decepticons. Weren't there like uh, only like ten or twelve of each? No, no, no. They were they were very rare, but not that rare. But they're still expensive. No, I mean like there was like ten or twelve different ones or different molds is what I mean of each of each faction. Of each character, you mean? No, of each faction from each faction because no, I know no, every character was, uh, wasn't I, covered. I mean, I don't remember. I'm, I'm off the top of my head. I think there was 45 different decoys. Oh, off the top of my head, I didn't think there was that many. Yeah, there might there might be a bit more. And then in Japan, they continued them when the U.S. stopped. Really? That I did oh. not know. Oh yeah, they have Ultra Magnus, Predaking, uh, Metroplex. Um, Superion, uh, a whole bunch of different guys. And then they came in different sizes over there, too. They made smaller ones, bigger ones. Now, for and they the, came in an assortment of colors. For those Blue, of you fantasy. who aren't familiar with the Generation 1 decoys, essentially they were just, they were kind of like big erasers is what they were. Uh, um, although they weren't erasers, that's kind of what they felt like. Uh, but they were meant to be, I guess, decoys or cannon fodder, I guess. For your play play battles, yeah, they were uh, and they were designed almost from the animation, heavily inspired by the animation, which was great. Which you really didn't get that much back in the day, especially in Generation One. You know, the no, toys were almost always like completely different from what you saw on the cartoon. But it was nice to have a little pack in that really didn't add anything to the cost but you had a little pack in of a little character of that character and and now the character that you got as a decoy wasn't always the character that was on the card uh, of the toy that you were buying um you know for example like you didn't get red alert with red alert or a brawn with a brawn sometimes you might but you might have got like hook constructicon hook with brawn uh, you might have got Bumblebee with Air Raid. You know, uh, it was kind of random, I guess, is how they put them in there. Yeah, they were randomly assorted. But you know, uh, that's that's kind of a a lost thing that that you just don't see anymore. The last time something big like that happened was the Unicron head with with Primus, Cybertron Primus, the first yep. edition. That's had right. that little Unicron head in it. And then uh, the subsequent releases took that piece out. And it had a little Unicron head that was like battle damage with some tentacles out of it. Yeah, I had I got that, that head. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what a big deal that was for, for collectors when that came out. I mean, it really didn't... I don't remember if it connected to the story of Armada or not. Or, or to Cybertron. But it was just, it was like indicative of G1, like that, you know, Unicron heads floating in the background. That was, that was the last time that I think something major like that happened. I'm thinking, I, I really can't think of any other time when we there got something was, like that. There were some, like, patches that came with some Human Alliance figures mm-hmm. now, for Dark I, of the Moon. I will say that there is something that that does come I'm, you know i don't want to say all negative things things that have that we don't get with modern toys that we used to get you know that modern toys come with absolutely no frills just toy in the package and that's it there's something that's really cool that i like that comes with these and i'm i'm kind of a, a collector of them and that's the uh the collector's cards the collectible cards uh, right, come uh, come packed in. I, I I'm I dig it. I'm I a big fan too. of I'm a, a big fan of the package art. Um, you know, we we did an old whole episode on on the G1 package art that over. If you have the G1 yes. Legacy book from Jim Sorensen, uh, and you're you're obviously 
some sort of a fan of the G1 art, uh, art, the package art, or any of the art that was included on the package. And to me, that's also relevant to what we're talking about tonight. How Have you ever actually bought a Transformer, not because you like the toy, but because the, the artwork on the box was cool? I'm guilty. I am guilty uh, of that. <laughs> I'm guilty of that, but when we were kids, it was different. The artwork was very stylized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm All trying right, to think so. if, if I've done that. I don't. I don't think so. Now, but I definitely would have been more susceptible to it when I was a kid. There, there was instances as a kid where the package art influenced my decision to buy a toy because I looked at the uh, the picture of the toy on the box and wasn't too impressed by it. But the package art or the 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 box art actually depicted it in a way that appealed to me and i wound up actually liking the toys and two of those were the duocons flywheels and battle trap the 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 box art i i thought was amazing the toys didn't look that great but they were fun toys so it, it actually those it actually fell into the trap of how are these i mean i'm so upset that here in 1987 we don't have articulation yeah yeah, or arms. <laughs> so in battle you know, back, arms. back in my day, we we had non-window boxes, so we had to rely on a picture of the toy in its alt mode and art, very stylized art that would be the representation of of this toy. So it, everything now comes in the window box. You have to be able to see the toy. You have to be. It's, it's very unusual. That you don't have a non-window box, and I, I think like to the Toys R Us masterpiece figures, like the, they're non-window boxes. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's a Japan, foreign toy. Japan's something you know a little different. Um, but you know, back uh, in the '80s, they were doing glow-in-the-dark mini posters, and we hadn't had a poster in a box I think since this until we had the Combiner Wars gift sets. Which came yes. with those uh, with with those posters inside of them. There was well the the Cybertron figures had the posters that were also the product catalogs, and then the first movie the preview guys the uh, Optimus and Starscream deluxes that transformed into meteors. Hmm. Uh, they Earth. had posters if you got them at Walmart. I got mine at Walmart. They, I don't recall have, getting them. I don't remember. It was that wasn't an in package variant then because. I don't remember I'm not getting aware a poster of that. with those. Yes, I think because no, it had a call out no, for it. There's no in package variant for that that I'm aware of. Yeah, it was just uh, it was with the instruction stuff, so it would be in the bottom of the box. Although, if you have one of those, uh, one of the star screams of those, and it's sealed in the package, there are variants out there now that uh, that instead of the star scream, you got gold dust in it. <laughs> Mine's still yeah. kicking. Yeah, it's a it's a pain in the butt, but um, mine's my. I have one card and it's still in good shape. Just don't shake it very and I, hard. And I think I have a variant, but it's not a poster variant. Yeah, the poster things were cool. It's, like you said, with the combiner stuff, it was really cool to see that come back. It was it was a better to me. It's better than having you know this little card thing. I hate these things, especially because when you got them with Combiner Wars. There's nothing on the back. Ah, uh, but you keep them. I guess. Look, see, you're, you're keeping that card because you had it on your desk. I did. But see, uh, I, I don't like that. I mean, even the new Power of the Primes ones where it has just a little bit of bioinformation is a little bit better, but I still don't like it. I, I wish it had lots of bioinformation. I would, yeah. I would have enjoyed the cards more. I would enjoy the cards more if, like on the front, you have the fantastic art by Marcelo, um, which I think he does a large portion of those. Um, uh, You have that fantastic artwork, and that's one of the reasons why I keep them, because I love that artwork. Um, It's original, it's fresh, and it's downright cool. Uh, But I wish that, like you said, on the back, we had like a, a full tech spec. You know, I know there's not a whole lot of real estate on the back, but, you know, at least give us a full bio uh, that's more than just a sentence in three languages uh, and give us like a bar graph at least 
you know, a small bar graph of the abilities of the character. Yeah, that that was something that we had talked about while I was working at Hasbro is that we have so much uh, legal information that you have to put on there. And then you have to do the tri-language uh, or more or a five-language card that you really can't put that many words on it. But then, you know, that does take away from from a character sometimes. But if you're uh, already so doing a pack-in card, you could put all that information on the card because that legal information doesn't need to be on there. Uh, yes and no. I, it's, I think it had to do with certain countries have certain different laws. So, you know, to appease one, you'd have to do it on all of them because you wouldn't just print a set, a, a new set of cards for something that would just ship to a, a particular region. Well, see, that don't make, uh, that, that's something that never made sense to me from a marketing standpoint. If you're going to do a pack-in, and there's, uh, there are packaging variants. We know that there's packaging variants. You know, uh, especially, you know, even back in the day in Generation 1, you had some, some of the same toys. For example, Aerobots. Some of them had decoys. Some of them didn't. You know, uh, some of them had the movie poster or the glow-in-the-dark poster. Some of them didn't. Uh, didn't. Uh, you know... Uh, and uh, Combiner Wars. Some of them had comics. Some of them didn't. Uh, I, well, that's a that's a region thing. Comics were in America. Non exactly. So if else. you're going right. to do that, then what difference does it make? You know, put uh, put you know the ones that come out in the North American region, put them out with the bio cards. And let's say you have some that goes to Europe. Uh, you know, to Germany. Uh, <laughs> Do, uh, you know, either print, but that takes up resources. That takes up having to hire someone to do that, to manage that, uh, take someone on the creative side. But they're doing it already, is what that. I'm saying, though. They're doing it already with some uh, some variants. And if they're going to do that, then you know, either have it have some places with the card and some with without. You know, and and in in this day and age, it's rather easy. If you want a specific version of something, like if if you're in Europe and you want a version with with the bio card, just get it online. You know. Uh, but if you if you don't care, just get it locally. That's that's my thing. Can we talk about bios for a second? Because sure. I actually had a, a little bit to say about that. Sure. When well, you guys had it when you guys were kids with G1, and then I had bios up until you know recently. And when I was a kid, I knew that I wanted to work on Transformers any way I could. And I'm not a very design oriented person, so I can't I can't make them, I can't engineer them. But I'm a good writer, so I could write the bios. So I wanted to be the person when I grew up to write the bios, and I practiced writing them when I was younger. I, I went to school and did writing things that way. Only to find out that as I aged, bios went away. I mean, who are they going to hire to write one sentence? It could be literally anybody. They used to have Forrest Lee, the copywriter. I don't know if he still works for Hasbro or not, but that was the job I wanted. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And but now it's not some, an option. They're not, they're not hiring people to do that anymore. But, you know, Forrest, Forrest did a great job, and sometimes Forrest would ask me for input and say, hey, what do you think about this character? This, a lot of times it was newer characters. Uh, but it's not like he was the copywriter just for Transformers. Right. So he would do a ton of other stuff in Marvel, and he'd have to like dig deep with Marvel. Like He'd have to do a lot of research, going through comics and the internet, to really like nail down a, That's a, a bio. And when you have like an assortment of, let's say... Um, 42 new figures coming down the line, plus you have Transformers, plus you have variants, plus you have to figure out all the legal copy that needs to go on there. That's a lot. It was a tough job. It was a tough job. Um, so you could see how, from a marketing point, they would also look to cut that down to yep. the minimum so that they oh, can still only have one it. person doing the job. Yeah, I just I miss it. And I, I wanted that to be my career path. Don't you know, I, I miss it too. And, you know, for a time during Cybertron, I think it was Cybertron, the bios were online, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't think helped. And the whole idea was directing them towards Transformers.com. But 
those those websites get updated and those bios go away. And if it wasn't for things like the wiki, those be bios forever. would be gone forever. Yep, temporary. The, uh, speaking of bios, uh, didn't you write a few in your day, Rick? Yeah, I wrote a few bios. Um, first one I ever wrote was before I worked for Hasbro. Ricochet. Was Ricochet, the, the U.S. release of Ricochet. Stepper. I wrote a, I wrote a few for the club. Uh, for Bacon, and uh, I think I wrote a few for Hasbro while I was there on behalf of Forrest. I can't any, remember. Any particular characters you remember? I think I did, I think I did Swindle for uh, the War for Cybertron or Follow Cybertron, because I was like, I got to do that guy. I got to do it. I got to do that one. And then I wrote all the bios for the Hall of Fame, and... I was trying to pull from all the different universes to make one bio. Yeah, that was that, interesting. That, you know, it's not like, it's not this version from this universe or this version from that universe. It's all of them. It's all just, of them it's just got universes. little tidbits from everything in there. Yep. And, and Erector wasn't allowed into the Constructicons because he wasn't green. <laughs> but then they became yellow in G2, which is why when we did the G2, when we did the video presentation for Erector, I made him pink. <laughs> so that he still would try to fit in. I remember that. Right. I was there for that. He, he's, yeah. Where, by the way, speaking of that video and people who are who remember the video, what was the um, the cartoon that you got? The uh, it looked like a, a rector, but it wasn't a rector. Uh, it had a crane as a dick. And he was sitting there, you know, want, 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 want. You know. Oh, well, that wasn't in the video, but that's from GoBots. That's, that's from Machine Go Robos. I could have swore that was in the video. No, that wasn't no. in the video. No, that wasn't in the video. No, we did all original art for the video. What is that dude's name? That dude has a weird... I think his name is also Erector. Was it? He, I don't the know. The orange crane guy from GoBots? I think mm -hmm. his name is also Erector. Hmm. Not a lot of names you can Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's what it is. Oh. I don't know. I never got into GoBots that deep to know, but uh, yeah, we did. I, I hired uh, people from all over the spectrum to do different Erector art. Um, we got uh, everyone did like a different piece. We did alternators, Beast Wars, G2, movie, uh, the MMOG. Did animated too. We did animated. Uh, we never did Beast Wars. Uh, uh, Beast Machines, sorry. We never did a Beast Machines one. Um, Although that would have been a cool Beast Machines record. Yeah, he was, he was a beaver. He was a <laughs> beaver in Beast Wars. <laughs> but he was like a Scottish beaver, right? Yeah. So like when he transformed into robot mode, the tail would become a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> so where is that stuff now? Uh, as far as I know, there's only one copy of that video in existence. And where does it live? Somewhere. Unfortunate. Mm. Somewhere under the rainbow. Some somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um let's think of some other things that are included that were included around the toy that um we either miss or like Don suggested, uh we hope never come back. Uh, are there are, are there any that you can think of off the top of your well, head? I'm not a big fan of having instructions on the back of carded figures. Oh no, that's horrible. Now I know that for a certain price point, okay, uh, all right. You look at your mini bots from G1. You you look at even some of your uh, basics or um, you know from Beast Wars. So it's got like four or five steps. That's no problem. Yeah, you know your activators. Okay, fine. You know, but. Uh, you know, <sighs> the robots in disguise warriors. I, I I think they're big enough that they deserve to have instructions. Yeah, mm -hmm. boxes used to have flaps a long time ago, and on the top of the box, that's where it would be. You know, a couple steps just to show you that it goes right. from this mode to this mode. But uh, with the absence of flaps now, um, so much is fitted onto the front of the box back of the box is usually hey ch there's these other figures available robot mode vehicle mode ex you know it does this combines with this his head comes off becomes his tit whatever um, <laughs> becomes his tit 
Yeah, over, Overlord's an Overlord. interesting character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I think even like combiners like uh, Swindle and Vortex, and I think I think on like the European gold card releases, they had the the steps for transforming it on the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right here. Yes, but see, that's four steps. Not a big deal. But whenever you get into multiple steps, like 10, 12 steps, that's a lot to put on the yeah. back of a card. And then there's tech specs. They even had room for that. Yeah. Tech specometer. You would take your tech specs, cut them out of the box, and you'd be able to read them with your transformers tech specometer. That's gone. I wouldn't have sacrificed it to get rid of tech specs in general, but I'd like that you don't have to cut them out anymore. That flimsy piece of red film was so cool. It came with all your box transformers. You would put it over the back of the box, or you'd cut the text book out and put it over, and you'd be able to see the Love power that. levels. Loved it. And, you know, at the time, that was genius. But there's, there's nothing interactive Not like very that practical. now. Now it's you take your phone, and you scan the QR code, and it, and it shows you the text box. All right, technology's just, moved in that direction. Yeah. But it's... You know, we come from a different generation. What about robot uh, points? Cutting them out, and mailing them in for another. New oh toy? man, I wish there was anything like that. Now we, the last one we had was in Revenge of the Fallen. Yes, for, the Ravage. Uh, yeah, this guy, I got him right here. Yes, yes, yes. I worked on that one. Yeah, yeah. he's awesome. I love him, and I wish there was mailaways all the time. During that same time, you could mail away and get like three deluxes or you could get the shirt and the matrix creo optimus prime and like a coupon you know th- just th- during that time there was mailways and then there haven't been any since that's something that we could have mentioned last week on on this episode whenever we were talking about things that have gone away that once identified the brand uh or identified the franchise that have yeah, completely mail-aways. disappeared away from the brand and it's sad because it was actually gave you something to, to work f- uh, toward you got a good reward and um, it encouraged more sales because to get the points that you needed to mail off for that toy you had to buy more toys you know yeah. so and you know the bigger the toy the more points you got you know so to me I, saw, I thought it was like a win win situation for everybody uh, but we just don't see that anymore and it's mm-hmm. sad um, and I think I think robot points started coming back with generations, and they and somebody asked in the box con, well, why is it on there? It's like, well, we haven't figured it out yet. We we haven't figured it out. And but then, then you know, um, yeah, Revenge of the Fallen comes around, and they finally did it. They they finally created a reason for those to exist again. But that that was the end of it. That that Revenge of the Fallen was like the last points mail away there is. What is interesting now is that Hasbro's doing a Kickstarter. What? Yes, so, I do want to talk about that, but I kind of want to talk about that in its own deal, like next week, because that is going to be insane. Well, it's going on right now. I know. And is that the just, the barge thing? The uh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 Star, the Star Wars Sailboard. barge, and and people are saying, oh. "Oh, it'll be great for Masterpiece Unicron." Will it? I don't know. I think a lot depends on the Star Wars barge and, and how it goes. I think it'll be great for stuff like Takara Tommy Mall's Grand Max, where if they didn't make the orders, they wouldn't have made it. And since they didn't make the extension of the orders, they didn't make the Pretender shell. I think we'll get stuff like Metro Titan finally that way. Eh. Mm. And I the think, extension I is Rabbit Grader. I, I think you're looking at new tooling, something that's a little more special. So I, I can see them saying, hey, we're going to do a a two-foot-tall Unicron or a, a two-foot-tall Scorponok because what we didn't see at Toy Fair was a big Titan. You yep. know, last last year we had Trypticon. Well, I, mean, you I can think make an Predi- argument that Predi- the Predi- Predi- Kings, but, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah Predi- they, don't, they don't come together in a, in a box set, do they? Yes, they do. Yeah. Oh, they do? Yes, they do. Yeah, Predi- they, showed, oh, they showed the box. Okay, okay so there, okay. My they mistake, showed the box. My mistake. Yeah, so that's he's, like, he's the like devastator from a couple okay. years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, my mistake. I because, thought he came separate. Off because Tantrum is called Torox now. He cleans your floors. Yeah, he comes with giant backpacks that turn into legs. Yes. Yeah. Thighs specifically. 
Although, I, although I do think it's genius that the fists fold up and inside the foot, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and store away inside the foot. So you can have like the big cannons on uh, Headstrong and Tantrum's backs, uh, and the fists are actually tucked away inside the foot cannons, and that's kind of neat. That that was kind of genius. You know who did that first? Feral Rex. Oh, I I don't have Feral. You know, yet. you know what else we're missing, which comes and goes. It comes and goes with this brand. Are the rub signs? Yes. They show up, they disappear, they show up, they disappear, they show up, they disappear. I don't like them. Why? Well, okay. Why, why, and then we'll tell you why you're wrong. That's fine. I mean, I understand why they're there. I just, you know, I think I should be able to see the the faction symbols on my toys. Well, they weren't meant to be the only faction symbol, though. Okay. They were. Back back in the day... I viewed uh, the the reason for the rub symbols was that because at the time you had a, a major competing transforming toy line in GoBots, right? right. And uh, to, and you knew you had a transformer if it had the rub sign on it. Yes, and uh, that's how you identified then, it as a as a transformer. And then um, we'll skip two hundred for the Decepticons. Which yeah, was those uh, guys. Post- reveal, right. reveal the shield, guys. The reveal, the, yeah. Sorry, thank you. Reveal the shield, not hunt for the reveal the shield. Based around that gimmick. Based around that gimmick, there, I think it was used inappropriately because the, yeah, and that's the one I don't specifically like. on tracks because you wanted that red, you wanted that big Autobot symbol on the hood of that car, and instead we got a little rub sign. Yep, on the on the top on the hood. There, that was a misfire. That was a misfire, but. It does harken back to the early days of the brand. And when things like that showed up in Beast Wars, it it just was another way of connecting Beast Wars, which was so far removed artistically and engineer-wise from G1, that to have that rub sign, it was just something special. It just it just connected it more to the to to its ancestors. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. What we need, and what I kept pitching, was a big shirt that's a giant rub sign. When you go out in the sun, the symbol shows Ooh. up, and when you go back inside, the symbol goes away. And it's but totally nobody, doable too. No, nobody ever understood the concept. I even made a mock up, and nobody, nobody understood the concept. I'm like, it's a shirt. And when you go outside, you're like, do you rub the shirt? No, no, no. The heat from the sun changes the shirt, and it's it. You see the symbol then. And nobody, nobody got into it. I would it. totally have one of each of those. Yeah. Now, didn't Beast Wars have some rub signs, too? Yeah, Beast Wars had rub signs. Uh, and then they switched, uh, once the Trans Metal 2s came out, they switched to Sparks, which was... Uh, which I like. I love those. I like the Sparks, too. Yeah. I like the Sparks because Sparks, you know, thanks to Beast Wars, became an important part of the brand. But they were put in, in awkward places. Like Cheetor, Transmetal Two Cheetor had the spark on his hip. Uh, some sometimes they're like in the shoulder. Uh, the cool ones had it like in their chest, right where it should be. Um, but it was the sparks were cool, and uh, then that went away with Beast Machines. Well, Beast well, Machines Rid, had Rid Megatron had it. Yeah. Okay. But he was the last. Yeah. Okay. Kind of and they, makes they me kind wonder of if he was, he was going to be designed as a beast machine almost. Yeah. Because he even had some of the beast machine aesthetic. A little bit. And of course, from that Well, I guess him and period. Bruticus yeah. and Air Attack Optimus Primal, but those are beast machines toys anyway. So, yeah, and then for all, all the repaints, they would just put the spark there, but it was a solid color, and they would just paint Autobot or Decepticon on it. Like Universe Razor Claw has yeah. that. Yeah, for all the Universe repaints. Yeah. Now, uh, we get, our time is actually getting kind of short uh, right now, but uh, mm-hmm. to wrap up, let's talk about things that we that we don't want to see come back that, you know, for a while was included and uh, or we was actually 
have been part of the toys before or part of the surroundings of the toy um and we just didn't care for them for one reason or another uh and i'm going to throw this one out there and this is just going to be a general statement and that is rounded packaging uh the transformers armada Mm. the rounded car bubbles i you know it looked cool it looked really cool we even mentioned this uh, a few weeks ago when Aaron was on. Uh, I, I loved how they looked, but if you are collecting some that are sealed, uh, then yeah. you don't uh, you, you can't stack them. They're hard to stack. Uh, they roll all over the place. Just very annoying. They're they're not easy to pack away when you have to move from no. one house to another. No. Uh, same with the movie toys. Like the first movie toys suffered from that, and uh, uh, even the titanium figures, the the three inch ones that had the mm-hmm. like a blister bubble package, are a pain in the ass. Or to, what uh, about pack the up. Uh, the Transformers animated uh, the weird shaped boxes? You know, yeah. Uh, sometimes those were a bit of a pain. I love uh, those. I'm, I'm. <laughs> they kind display of, nice, but they are. It is awkward when you're trying to pack them all up because you have to move. Yeah, uh, I'm more of a plain Jane. Let's let's keep the boxes simple. Either have just a, your your standard rectangle, rectangle or or square or whatever kind of box you have. Um, if you have, if you want to have a flap on it, that's fine. Uh, but I just prefer the plain. Jane See, box. I, I agree bubbles. that everything at retail, at regular retail, needs to be a square box. But there's things like the Comic Con stuff, or like a masterpiece figure, like the masterpiece Star Screen came and what was almost a Decepticon style box, which is what I think we were trying to go for. Mm-hmm. Um, those things are special. They they command a higher price at retail, and they stick they stick out better. They're they're better display pieces. So for things like that. Yes, a, a different packaging g- gives it a, a an extra appeal, but for like regular retail release, like those those animated packaging, man, those leader animated with their weird yeah <laughs> boxes that <laughs> although it was and- it was eye catching on the shelf, it, I, I have to give them that. Um, just the colors, but the thing what is. The thing? the thing is, is that uh, you you brought up something else, exclusive packaging. Uh, that also goes back to something that we that we kicked off talking about uh, pack-ins like mini cons and everything. We do still get those from time to time, and we just recently got some uh, with uh, Titan Returns RC and Grotusk uh, got a pack-in extra head. Um, well, that's a that's a that's a convention exclusive. That's not something that's a retail. Like a regular retail, you go to your Toys R Us or Walmart and get yeah. Grotusk. Yeah, Dark, I think Dark of the Moon's the last time we saw that. Was Grotusk a convention came with exclusive? Deluxes. Yeah, was, you would see. Uh, was it Dark of the Moon or Revenge of the Fallen? Where I think they, they both would, had it, but like they would you could get Leader on the side. Swindle. Yeah, yeah. Or not or Swindle. Uh, camshaft. Sorry, Repaint Swindle. Yes. And then there's like the weird, the weird descent of figures, like the 2000 Chevy Chevy Aero. Aveo. Or, Aveo. It wasn't. Was it the Aveo? Yes, yeah, the Aveo. That you had to go test drive a Chevy in order to get it, mm-hmm. or go to an event in Canada, or whatever other. Or weird just way pay a premium that. and get one from somebody yeah. that has for something. for a mediocre toy. It was it was a pain in the butt to get a mediocre toy. It's not like it was like. You know, if it was like a Bumblebee or an Optimus or something, you know. Another toy that comes with no accessories. Absolutely. Uh, can you, But can it was a unique mold. Absolutely. It was. I like it. It was a unique mold that's never come out anywhere else. Uh, Christian, do you think of anything that you wish wouldn't come back that was well, I have, included? I have stuff that I wish would come back, but uh, stuff I'm glad that is here now. But the stuff that I wish would never come back is the current plastic ties that tie the figures into the bubbles. I they wish, are annoying. 
I they wish are. that we could go to like the Takara style clamshell packaging. That those are fine. Yeah, awesome. I like the the rattan ties, the paper ones. Those were the best because I like recycling, so those are cool. <laughs> and I'm also glad we currently have window boxes for like everything, like this guy. Window boxes are cool, and yeah, I, I miss I miss the ties, man. I like twisty ties. I get why those aren't there because metal's expensive. But the the paper ties got to be cheap. Put the paper ties back. I hate twist ties. I hate them. I hate twist ties. I hate I hate the rattan ties. I hate the uh, plastic ties. I want a clamshell. Uh, you know, just cut the tape around the edge, lift off. If you want to put it back friendly. in the package, you can. Collector friendly. Yes. And I don't see it as that much more expensive. Maybe even cheaper, cheaper to do it that way, wouldn't it? I would mm. think. You have to make two vacuum form pieces instead of one. Yeah, but then you're not paying. You're not paying uh, the ties. Asian woman to take a gun and do all the ties. So and possibly damage the toy in the process too. You could save money. Yeah, no, I would know. But, you know, that, that again, does that fall under the uh, different regions have different laws? So, like, clamshells may not be allowed in certain areas. Or, you know, twist ties are used primarily to prevent theft. That's what they're there for. Yeah. Well, um, you know, that's, that's some things to talk about and things to think about. Um, we encourage our listeners to uh, share their thoughts on things that surrounding the toy that aren't necessarily the toy itself. Uh, whether it be packaging, pack-ins, accessories, uh, things that you enjoyed, things that you didn't enjoy, uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can tweet them to us at TFYLP. Go on to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP uh, and talk about it in there. Uh, and as always, go to tftalk.net and find out all the latest information on the podcast. And uh, sometimes we have current news up there as often as I can get it up there. Uh, and yes. Uh, as check, often as you can get it up. Yes. As often as I can get it up. Sometimes I have to take a blue pill to do so. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. You guys are weird. I don't. I don't. I'm not that old yet. I'm not uh, that age. Diabetes. Uh, <laughs> diabetes. Uh, also, check out a really cool book on Amazon.com. There's a link on TF. Uh, tftalk.net uh, for the uh, front page. Uh, Rick is holding up the book right now. It is the uh, unofficial guide to vintage Transformers by someone named uh, J.E. Alvarez. And, uh, is there any relation we give, to you? We have these uh, available through the Patreon as well, where yes. you can get a signed copy. Yes, if you, uh, if you do our top tier um, and become a Patreon at patreon.com slash tfylp uh, if you do our top tier, you will get an autographed copy of that book uh, from Rick. Um, so, and we, maybe something else. Yes, yes. Transformers related. Yes, he he will he will send you a kiss player. My, my kid will show up <laughs> at your house with a note saying, "I belong to you now." And it will transform into an adult, and you will have to pay for his college. Feed me mac and cheese. <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, Patreon, we love all of our, uh, our people that Patreon for us. It helps us continue each month. It's helping me get a new computer soon, hopefully, um, if, if I can find the, the components to do so. And, uh, you know, it just helps keep the lights on. You know, server fees are not cheap. And upgrade stuff, you know, uh, we got mics and everything to buy. Um, you know, I know I need to get, uh, uh, Christian, a, a mic and and everything. We need to get yes. Jim a mic. Yes, Jim. He's got a mic, but it just—I think his computer just sucks. Actually, his his mic seems good. I think he—he's uh, trying to do it all on a Chromebook, and that's, you know, you can't podcast from a Chromebook successfully, in my opinion, or not not with quality. It'd be like holding up your phone the whole time and going, "Yes, this is my podcast." You know. That's what I do. <laughs> or well, uh, hell, uh, uh, 
Flint Dilly, he uh, he po- he he joined the podcast from his cell phone in his backyard in his hammock. Uh, so, <laughs> did he have a cigar? No, no, he was just laying in his hammock and he talked to us until his battery died. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was awesome, awesome time. Uh, but uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on TFYLP this week. Uh, apologize that we can't be live. Um, again, You know, once I get a new computer, hopefully that will rectify that problem or at least solve a large portion of it. Uh, even this pre-recording right now, you can probably tell the video is really, really choppy. And that's because I have a slow computer. And with each new update, uh, you know, security patches and everything. This computer keeps getting slower and slower and slower. The the lowest uh, for this program that I use to broadcast and record with, the lowest spec require requires a Core i5. Uh, it's recommended to have a Core i5. I'm running this with a Core i3. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I'm actually t- overtaxing this computer just to bring this great podcast to you. So. Um, it's because he loves you guys so much. Yes, but I'm not. I know I'm not getting your Bud Light, um, and uh, that's the way it goes. I love you, man. <laughs> we will see you next time on TFYLP. I'm Deron for Christian and Rick. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Bye. Hail Satan. <laughs>